Hi and welcome to Sounds Heavenly. In this video, I'll aim to tell you everything you need to know about how to connect and to get the best from BLab 3 and BLab 9 speakers, with some help from my assistant. So, while Steve goes to sort out the cables that we need later in the video, let's take a look at the speakers. Now, these beautiful red BLab 3 speakers have been very kindly lent to me by James at soundaffair.com. I'm actually getting quite upset that I'm going to have to give these back in a few days' time. Now, launched in 2004, the amazing little BLab 3 speaker rewrote the rule book on how much bass response and treble dispersion you could get from such a small speaker. It's got two 125 watt digital amplifiers. It's got passive bass radiators. Let's show you these. So you've got one bass driver on the front, which is powered as a normal speaker, and two passive drivers. There's nothing new in that in itself, it's traditionally been used by Bang & Olufsen and other firms to extend the bass response of a speaker, but I've never seen it used in such a small speaker to such good effect. Now, as well as that, we have, I shouldn't have put that down in the first place, but we have the acoustic lens on top, which spreads out the treble, the higher pitch sounds, through 180 degrees. So wherever you sit in the room, you get optimum sound, you don't have to find the perfect sweet spot, as they call it, between the two speakers. Now, following the introduction of the Beer Lab 3, in three years later in 2007, the big brother, the Beer Lab 9, was launched. And that was basically a much larger, more powerful floor standing speaker with three amplifiers, 500 watts for the bass, 100 watts for the mid, and 100 watts for the treble. So really, really powerful speaker. Um, kept the acoustic lens for the treble and really strong, deep bass down to 30 hertz. So um, almost down to the lower limit of human hearing and able to fill even very large rooms with really high quality sound. Now both BLab 3 and BLab 9 used as we mentioned, the acoustic lenses, but also a clever bass management circuit known as ABL, Adaptive Bass Linearization. Now that was first seen in the late 1980s in the BLAB 3000 speakers and variants um, that you see behind me. And what that does basically at low listening levels, it boosts up the bass. Um, it counteracts the human ears um, lack of ability to hear quiet bass sounds. So it makes the music sound fuller and richer at low volumes. But then as you turn the volume up, it backs off proportionally the level of bass so that it doesn't overload the speaker drivers. So it gives you a, basically a nice warm, clear tone, makes the music pleasant and easy to listen to, but without overloading the speakers unnecessarily. So if Steve's ready, we'll get onto the, uh, the cables. Now, first of all, we're going to look at um, connecting these speakers to Bang & Olufsen TVs and music systems. The connections are exactly the same for BLab 3 and BLab 9. The only difference is that BLab 3 has a single socket, whereas BLab 9 has a second socket to allow one speaker to daisy chain from another when used with a BNO system. So first, when connecting to a classic BNO music system or TV with round eight pin power link sockets, then you must use the newer power link Mark III cables. And this is because these speakers have digital amplifiers and there's an extra grounding wire in the Mark III cables that prevents background hum and noise to be being transmitted through the speakers. I should note that Sounds Heavenly's Powerlink Mark II cables, the thick ones that are intended for speakers like the 3000s with displays, they can also be used with BLab 3 and BLab 9. However, um, cables from other companies are generally not suitable, the reason being they don't have the extra grounding wire fitted, whereas 
I make sure we fit them in every power link cable that we produce. Now when you connect to newer B&O products from 2013 onwards, they have a different style of socket and that was an RJ45 power link. So again, you can connect to any newer B&O TV or music system and we have an RJ45 to power link cable for that purpose. And if you already have Powerlink Mark III cables in place and you upgrade the music source, then we have yep, clip-on adapters which convert to the newer systems. Now there are quite a few options for connecting these speakers to a non-BNO music source or TV. We'll go for the simplest option first, and that is generally if you're using just two speakers for stereo sound and the television or the music system has a headphone socket. And in that case, we've got a nice simple cable that goes into the, the headphone socket of the music source and splits out to connect directly to two speakers. And the two sides of the cable can easily be pulled apart so that you can place the speakers as far apart as you want. So for example, with a one meter cable, the speakers can be up to two meters apart with the music source in the center. Again, any AV receiver, pre-amplifier or streaming music player that's got volume controlled RCA pre-out sockets. So for example, um, Sonos Connect or Blue Sound Node, these can connect directly to these speakers. And again, yep, one cable will connect two speakers using the power link inputs on the speakers. Now for all the cables we're talking about, there will be links and timing markers in the description of the video. So you can click on the timing marker to go directly to the part of the video that, were, that interests you. And you can also click directly on the link to go to the cable on our website. Next, um, the option to use if you have a conventional AV receiver or power amplifier that only has red and black speaker terminals is to add an attenuated converter. Now what this does basically is a little um, sound reduction box that um, removes the amplification from the, the receiver and adds on external pre-out sockets which are at just the right level for BioLab speakers. So that means that you can then use the cable we've mentioned previously with the um, RCA inputs through to the power link connections on the speakers. Now, when connecting the speakers to a B&O TV or music system via the power link cables, you'll find that there are a couple of switches on the back of both BLab 3 and BLab 9 speakers. Now, the first is a um, position switch, which is for left, right, or line. When you use the speakers with a B&O system, you can set the speaker to either left or right, depending on its position within the room. When you connect to a non-BNO system, both speakers will be set to line mode. And what that effectively does is it means that it will auto sense then for music instead of waiting for the Bang & Olufsen system to manually force the speaker to activate. The second switch um, marks basically where the speaker sits within the room. So that has three settings, free, wall, and corner. And let me just demonstrate to you how that will work with this speaker. So if I were to use this speaker out on the worktop here in a free space with um, at least a foot or 30 centimeters uh, of free air behind it, I would set the, um, the switch to free and that will slightly boost the bass response to make it um, easier for the speaker to cope in the larger airspace that it has. As we move that back towards the wall, then we would set the speaker to wall position and that gives a flat bass response. The wall naturally acts to boost the sound. But then as we look at the speaker in the far corner, once you get within 30 centimeters or a foot of the point where the walls meet, then um, the, you would use the corner position and that gives a slight cut to the bass. Every room naturally boosts the um, bass resonance when you get within 
um, a space of the, the corner of the room. So this way it stops the speaker becoming too deep and boomy. However, these are only a guideline. So there is no rule that says you have to use those speaker positions. If you're happier with the extra bass response that you get from the free position, but your speakers are in the corners of the room, that's fine. The ABL bass management software will keep the speaker controlled and prevent damage. So th this is really just a starting point. It's Bang & Olufsen's suggestion for the, the way to get the best from the speakers. Now, we've covered quite a few different options here. Please see the video description if you want to find the specific details of the cables for any given application. And if you want to find out about connecting them to a device we've not mentioned, then please get in touch. We're basically here to help you get the best from your BNO speakers and to connect them to absolutely anything. So the easiest way to get in touch with us is through the website at soundsheavenly.com and please click on the contact us link. There's plenty more content coming very soon. So please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell notification. Then you'll be the first to hear about the new videos we post. And coming up very shortly will be a big Bang & Olufsen mega test of speakers involving these lovely little BLAB 3s and a range of other BNO speakers and also some of the best of the non-BNO speakers that were about at the time to give you an indication of just how well these speakers perform. Watch this space.